Welcome to another lecture on molecules in motion. In the last class, we were discussing about the transport properties of a perfect gas and from there, what we had last seen is the uh, diffusional parameters for the various properties which we were uh, seeing how they get transported. Okay, these are the transport phenomena which we are going to we, we, we had discussed in the last class the diffusion, the thermal conductivity and viscosity. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, these are the um, uh, various transfer phenomena which we have uh, discussed. We had discussed also the phenomenological equations guiding the expressions for uh, the uh, diffusion, thermal conductivity and viscosity equations. Now, uh, to find out the uh, constants, the what do you call the, uh, the constants of the equations which we had derived based on empirical observations like experimental data, we had derived the expressions for the diffusion process, the thermal conductance and the viscosity and in that we had put in a constant of proportionality and these constants uh, are supposed to be the coefficients for that pro, pro, coefficient uh, coefficient for uh, diffusion coef, uh, coefficient for thermal conductivity coefficient for viscosity these coefficients which we want to find out we want to get a, a, a um, say some expression for that like if we want to derive them these are the parameters we call them diffusional parameters not necessarily is associated with only the diffusion process because these are the coefficients which we had derived in the phenomenological equations. These expressions the d, the kappa, the eta, how are we going to derive this? We are if it if we want to do it in this syllabus it is uh, not possible because what we have to do is to use the kinetic model and the kinetic model means we have to look into the distribution function and how are they going to be affected by the various gradients which is generated. Like when you have a, a, a mass flow when through a diffusion process, then what you have to have is a gradient in concentration. Similarly, for thermal conductance, you will need a, diffu a, 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 a gradient in temperature and simi similarly, here you have a gradient in velocity. So, uh, so, so in all, all of these, uh, it is difficult to have the uh, actual type of the equation uh, which we derive from the kinetic model using the distribution function. So, what we have done here, we have accepted the, the uh, parameters which have been derived from, from the, the Maxwell's uh, uh, the kinetic model and we have taken them as such and tried to interpret them in, it, in terms of the observations we have in our experiments. Okay. So, these are the parameters which we had looking into. So, we will take each, uh, uh, each of the diffusional parameters or coefficients of the phenomenological equations which we had derived in the last lecture and see how they how interpret their in, uh, significance. Okay. So, first let us go into the um, diffusion co coefficient d. According to the kinetic model, the diffusion coefficient uh, can be equated to 1 by 3 lambda c. This is the average velocity or speed. And what is lambda? The lambda is the mean free path. That is the distance uh, uh, molecule travels between a successive collision. Okay. So, in, in previous classes, we have derived the expression for mean free path, which was the average velocity divided by the collision frequency z and that was equated to the k t or k b t what is this is the Boltzmann constant uh, divided by under root 2 and this is sigma, sigma is the uh, cross section area of collision, collision cross section area which is equal to pi d square where d is the uh, if the two molecules are identical, d will be the diameter of one molecule. Okay, this is the area through which the uh, molecules are moving. So,
So, and obviously we have done this previously in our uh, in the earlier classes, the derivation for finding out the ex expression for the average velocity or speed. So, now what is the significance of this expression? You see you have lambda and you have a mean speed associated with the diffusion coefficient. So, what does it signify? The mean free path lambda as we know mean free path lambda is inversely proportional to the pressure. Okay? So, the mean free path lambda decreases as the pressure is increased. So, in, we increase the pressure, the mean free path is going to decrease. Okay? So, if the pressure increases, mean free path decreases. So, if there is a decrease in the um, mean free path, that, that means it will be there will be a decrease in the coefficient value d. So, what you have when you have increased pressure, the diffusion coefficient also reduces. Increase in pressure reduces the value of the diffusion coefficient. That means, uh, what you have is um, in, with increasing pressure, what you have if you have increasing pressure then uh, the diffusion coefficient is going to be decreased that means diffusion will be less okay so uh, what happens d decreases with increasing pressure so as a result molecules uh, will diffuse more slowly okay so if d decreases molecules diffuse much slow at a slower rate okay so we have one parameter which we have discussed as what happens when you have a physical parameter like pressure which is being changed. If pressure is increased, the diffusion parameter decreases and the diffusion process is slowed or retarded. Okay? Now, what, hap what about the mean free uh, the means uh, speed or the average speed? You see this is directly proportional to the uh, diffusion coefficient. So, if you inc and what you know? we know that it is directly proportional to the temperature under root of temperature. So, with if you increase the temperature, the C increases from this relationship. So, if you increase the temperature, the C increases and if C increases, then the coefficient of diffusion increases. So, the increase in temperature, D increases. As a result, if you have molecules uh, that have hot samples diffuse much quickly than those of the cold ones right because if you have having a hot sample then your uh, diffusion rate is going to be much the diffusion coefficient is going to be much faster and hence you will have a much faster diffusion for a given concentration gradient right next another parameter let us look into mean free path that is the lambda increases when the collision cross section area of the molecule decreases. Now, collision cross section uh, uh, what, what is it related to? You have this expression in which you see the uh, sigma that is the co um, uh, collision cross section area of the molecule is going to be inversely proportional to the lambda the mean free path. So, when you have uh, in, uh, decrease in the this will increase the lambda will increase if you have a decrease in the mean free uh, the the cross section area collision cross section area and what is collision cross section area related to it is pi d square where d is the diameter of the molecule so if you have a bigger molecule bigger will be the diameters so, if you have bigger molecules, you, or you have a bigger diameter, so cross section uh, uh, um, collision cross section area increases. If the collision cross section area increases, lambda decreases. If lambda decreases, diffusion coefficient also decreases. So, what happens if you have a smaller molecules, they will have a get higher value of d compared to the ones which are smaller. Uh, so, uh, for larger sorry. So, if the if you have smaller molecules, they will diffuse more faster than the ones which are having the larger diameter or larger in size. Okay? Now, what we have here is uh, similarly, 
we have another uh, parameter which we need to discuss is the thermal conductivity. Now, thermal conductivity as we know is uh, associated with the gradient in temperature. So, the thermal con conductivity according to the kinetic model can be derived using uh, the kinetic model to give us an expression something like this. This is the kappa the thermal conductivity coefficient and that is 1 by 3 lambda average speed into the this is the molar heat capacity of that particular substance at constant um, vol volume okay and this is the molar concentration of the gas see if you what you have here we have three parameters uh, four parameters which is uh, kappa dependent on the molar concentration of the gas the say molar uh, the molar heat capacity at constant volume the mean speed and the value of uh, mean free path so what we have from observation is thermal conductivity is greater for the gas which is having higher heat capacity what is higher heat capacity higher heat capacity means the mm, uh, amount of heat required to uh, increase the temperature of our system by 1 degree okay so the uh, if you have th uh, 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 thermal conductivity uh, coefficient will be larger if the heat capacity is larger because they are directly proportional for a given temperature gradient so this is supposed to be uh, this will uh, what we can say the thermal conductivity for is greater for a gas with a higher heat capacity because for then a temperature gradient will be correspond to a greater energy gradient okay so because uh, you see the heat capacity is a measure measure of the amount of heat required to rise the temperature so it is a response function which you have to the temperature change so if because there if for a given temperature gradient you will have a, a various a higher amount of energy gradient generated okay so if you have higher heat capacity higher heat air gradient in energy is uh, generated for the same temperature gradient understood because it's the amount of heat required to raise the temperature by 1 degree so the gradient if even if it is 1 degree the amount of heat which is going to be uh, required is going to be different for a different uh, species having different heat capacity so if you are having a higher heat capacity then you generate a greater gradient in energy corresponding to the same gradient in the temperature so the th thermal conductivity is greater for materials having higher heat capacity right the next one is another parameter which is lambda the mean free path as we know mean free path is inversely proportional to the pressure you just see in the uh, previously also we had discussed mean free path is inversely proportional to the pressure and is directly proportional to the so, sorry and uh, um, the pressure is what pressure is if you remember if you have the pressure expression here you see pressure is here we have number of molecules per unit vo uh, volume this is the number um, density we can change it into the molar uh, molar concentration this is a concentration term and this concentration term if i uh, multiply uh, number of moles with the avogadro number we can replace that for the n so i get a n by v uh, factor here okay and then i multiply n a by with the smaller mass then i get the molar mass of that particular gas understood so i have this expression for pressure if you have from the uh, initial classes we had derived this expression for pressure you see it is directly pressure is directly proportional to the number density or you can say in terms of the concentration molar concentration if i replace n by the number of moles into avogadro number that is small n into n a then a small small n by v will be the concentration number of moles in the unit volume you have and the uh, capital n a into the small mass will give you the molar mass 
So, we can have this uh, equation uh, related to that, but more or less you can understand the pressure is a function of the um, concentration. It is here we are talking about number density, we can talk about in moles per uh, uh, molar concentration as per uh, uh, the expression you have. So, the pressure you see is directly proportional to the molar um, concentration. Okay? So, you have lambda inversely proportional to the pressure from this expression and hence lambda will be inversely proportional to the concent molar concentration. Right? Since, pressure is directly proportional to the molar concentration, so lambda will be inversely proportional to pressure and also to the number density or molar concentration. Right? So, what happens here? You see here you have the concentration as the thermal uh, conductivity is directly proportional to the co molar concentration and also directly proportional to the um, uh, lambda, the mean free path. But mean free path is uh, uh, inversely proportional to the pressure. So, this is going to be 1 by p proportionality and this will be directly p proportionality. So, you can cancel out the p. So, what you have? You have a make expression independent of pressure. Am I clear? So, what you have here? You have an expression for thermal conductivity and we are if you want to see the influence of pressure, you just see what are the parameters which is dependent on pressure. The mean free path is inversely proportional to the pressure that is this is 1 by p and this is the molar concentration molar concentration is directly proportional to p. So, this is directly proportional to p and this is inversely proportional to p. So, the p is going to be cancelled off. So, it does not matter whether you have changing in p the whatever you have the p as it is independent as far as the thermal conductivity is con concerned. Okay? So, what is the reason behind having thermal conductivity independent of the pressure. The reason for that if you see I have kept these expressions uh, here, so that you can understand reason for pressure independence of kappa is that the thermal conductivity can be expected to be large when molecules are available to transport energy, but the presence of large number of molecules what happens? They are get their get their flow, or their movement gets restricted, limits their mean free path. Okay, and they cannot carry the energy over a uh, large distance. Okay, so if you have a pressure, if you have uh, a large number, pressure means you have large number of molecules. If pressure increases, the molar concentration is supposed to be large. If you have large concentrations of molecules, then what happens? If the large number of molecules are available to transport energy, obviously that should increase the uh, thermal conductivity, but what happens? Due to this large number of molecules, their movement is restricted and there, this gives rise to a restriction in their mean free path, because that is what is the measure of how freely they are moving, because that is the distance they have to travel between each collision. So, if they, if they are going to be uh, restricted, then they cannot carry the energy to a long distance. Okay? So, if you increase the pressure number of molecules, then uh, this is what is going to be happening in the thermal conductivity. So, eventually you uh, these effects of concentration and the uh, relation between uh, pressure and concentration and pressure and uh, the mean free path makes you a, a parameter, gives you a parameter of independence of um, pressure for the thermal conductance. However, at low pressure, at very, very low pressure what happens is the T temperature becomes proportional to the pressure. Okay? You see just have a, uh, the expression here, M mean free path is also dependent on pressure and temperature both. So, when you are having very low pressure, 
here we are not talking about any, uh, we, we are talking about moderate or high pressure, but when we have very low pressure what happens? Temperature becomes proportional to the pressure and what happens? The lambda exceeds the diameter of the apparatus. Okay? The, the mean free path, the distance which is, uh, uh, if, I, if you remember how I, uh, the distances I have shown in compared to the uh, uh, near, uh, the, the, what how the dimension of the mean free path should be when uh, compared to the dimension of the mole molecules and the intermolecular distances, they were much much higher if you remember. So, if the lambda, uh, if you at low pressure what happens, happens is lambda exceeds the dimension of the apparatus in which they are existing and the distance over which the energy is transported is deten determined by the size of the container and not by the number of molecules present. Okay? So, the now, it, when does it, the uh, let's say uh, lambda uh, becomes, uh, lambda becomes important only when you are having uh, uh, the dimensions uh, of pressure much lower, if the pressures are low, much much uh, moderate, moderate or high, if the pressure is much much lower, what happens? The pressure is lower, the number density is going to be lower. So, the, the lambda which you have, the mean free path you have is going to be so large that it exceeds the dimension of the apparatus or vessel you have and the distance over which the energy is transported hence will not be because we are talking about how the energy is being transported k is the measure of that. So, when you are uh, seeing that the k here is going to be depending not on the uh, which is dependent on lambda will not depend on the, uh, 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 the number of molecules, but on the size of the apparatus that, that is what we are looking into see we are, when you have very low pressure, the lambda is going to be very large, very large and, and since it is going to be in the dimensions of the um, apparatus which you are seeing. So, now it as it is when pressure is low, the uh, number of molecules are low. Okay. So, now the number of molecules will not be that significantly important in determining the uh, kappa. So, you here we, uh, what we have is the size of the container of the gas is going to determine the kappa instead of, uh, uh, instead of the number of molecules. Okay? The distance over which it is going to be transported is not going to depend on the number of molecules, but on the um, container size. Okay? The flux is still proportional to the number of carriers or the no number of molecules, but the length of the journey um, no longer depends on lambda. Okay? So, the flux, what is flux? Flux is the number of molecules passing through an imaginary window in a given time divided by the area of the window divided by the time interval through which it is passing. So, the, this flux of whatever it is is going to be in, in terms of energy, in terms of molecules or in terms of uh, whatever parameter we are looking at. The flux of energy here is going to be proportional to the number of molecules which is carrying the uh, kinetic energy, but here the, it, uh, the length of the uh, uh, no longer depends on the lambda. It is only dependent on the concentration number of molecules present. Okay. Flux is going to be pro proportional to the number of molecules present. So, since flux is going to be on, uh, will be the only contributing factor and not the uh, lambda as a significant factor for having uh, this expression for uh, when we are having a transfer of energy, which implies that the kappa will be proportional to the pressure. Okay since kappa is proportional to the um, concentration of the molecules. Similarly, we have another um, uh, parameter which is the viscosity coefficient 
and viscosity coefficient can be given by this expression molar mass into lambda again c is the mean speed and this is the molar concentration of the gas. What is the significance of this expression? Now, I have given out the expressions for lambda and the mean speed and this is obviously equal to uh, proportional to the pressure, the concentration of the molar concentration of the gas. Now, what we see? What, how, how do we interpret the coefficient of viscosity? Coefficient of viscosity is directly proportional to the lambda, but lambda is inversely proportional to pressure and concentration of the molecule is directly proportional to P. Okay? That means, the viscosity coefficient is independent of pressure this is that in inversely proportional, this is directly proportional. So, they get cancelled. So, the eta is independent of pressure and is only dependent on the mean free, um, uh, the mean speed of the molecule. Okay? So, here what we have the viscosity is independent of pressure. Now, again you see C is proportional to the temperature under root of temperature according to the expression we have. So, since C is proportional, I mean C, uh, speed is proportional to the root um, square of temperature, uh, under root of temperature. So, you, what we have the eta value is also going to be proportional to the under root of temperature. So, viscosity will increase as the temperature increases. So, now let us see uh, of the, uh, what is the significance of the expressions we have. What is the reason for the pressure independence? It is the same as we had in the thermal conductivity, where A increases, pressure increases. This is directly proportional to the pressure. The concentration of the molecules increase when the uh, as uh, when the pressure increases, the concentration increases of the molecules increases, and as you have increase in concentration, you have increase in pressure and you have a decrease in the value of lambda, the mean free path through which the, uh, the uh, velocity is carried. Here we have a gradient in velocity, so that is how it is carried. So, what, what will happen? So, the, when you have increase in concentration, increases that is the increase in pressure, more number of molecules will be available to transport the momentum. But they carry not to a very far, uh, 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 they cannot carry out very far because the mean free path decreases. Okay? So, we have a, a, a parameter which is uh, uh, where you have pressure is within the factor, in, uh, pre, uh, the coefficient of viscosity is independent of pressure only because it is directly proportional to the concentration of molecules. If the concentration of molecules is high, then the pressure is going to be high as well. But the number of molecules are available, but the, the, uh, the amount which is going to be uh, transported, when here you have the transportation of momentum, transfer of momentum, that will not be carried to a very far distance, because lambda is going to decrease, which is inversely proportional to the pressure. Okay, but the term becomes independent of pressure. If you increase the viscosity uh, with temperature, because at high temperature the molecules travel more quickly and the flux of momentum is greater. So, what happens if you increase temperature? What is the reason of uh, increasing temperature, increasing the viscosity coefficient? As you increase the temperature, higher at high temperature molecules travel more quickly. So, if you are having a flux window where through which the molecules are going to pass this flux will have a higher concentration of the molecules in, in uh, which is going to be carrying the momentum. So, so this, this since increase in the flux uh, is going to be affected uh, if you increase the temperature that is why the viscosity is going to be increased. Okay? Now, this, uh, this is so far as what we have discussed till now, what we are now going to look into is uh, we are going to shift paradigm to go and talk about liquids. Okay? 
So far we have talked about the gaseous system, what we have now going to be looking into, what we have seen is the viscosity coefficient for uh, a gaseous system is independent of the pressure. Okay? Viscosity of, of the liquid uh, of, of the gases increases as you increase the temperature. Okay? Now, in contrast, we will look into uh, a liquid system when we have molecules carrying transporting various uh, uh, through various transport phenomena operational in a medium not in gas, but in liquid, we will see the viscosity of the liquid system decreases with increase in temperature. This is so because of the existence of the intramolecular forces which needs to be overcome before they start flowing. Okay? So, the next chapter which is going to be taken up uh, now next time in detail, but we will just in, uh, introduce you to what we are going to be discussing from next class is in this section we are going to be looking into the motion of uh, uh, liquid and in general what we will be looking into is ions in liquid. The information which we carry out in monitoring the ions move, moving of the ions in liquid, we are going to be using that to interpret or infer the behavior of uncharged species. So, we are going to get a generalized expression for movement of charge species like ions in, in the solution, then that is the phase we are looking into the motion of ions in liquid and then we will go ahead to interpret how they are going to be, be applied to a uncharged species. So, before we go into uh, the process of uh, discussions of various type of ion motions and what is the interpretation of how we are going to deal with it, let us look into what we have as a general experimental evidence, uh, evidence of motion of molecules in a liquid. Which Ha, this is whatever what we are going to be discussing is the most crudest method of uh, experimental studies. What we have done is say taking the temperature dependence study of viscosity of water. This is the how the graph looks like. Okay, this is the uh, uh, graph which we have for molecules that move in liquid. It must acquire a minimum amount of energy to escape the intermolecular interactions. Uh, subject it is subjected to by the surrounding neighboring molecules. So, at a, as temperature is increased more molecules are able to escape the potential energy well provided by the uh, interactions of the molecules surrounding it in the neighborhood. So, the liquid becomes more fluid it, it becomes starts flowing. Okay? So, increase in temperature makes it to become more fluid. Okay? So, what you have the same experiment if we continue, the probability of finding the molecules with a energy at least of say activation energy, uh, energy E A will be proportional to E to the power E A minus, uh, minus e, e, e to the power minus uh, E A by R T. This is the probability of finding the molecules that have the least acquired the least amount of energy the least amount of activation energy. So, these are these are the molecules uh, this fraction of, of molecules are going to be having will be able to move move freely. So, this is the uh, we can say is the fluidity of this expression can be a representation of a fluidity of molecule in the liquid system uh, and which will follow a temperature dependence something like this. Okay? Since uh, the coefficient of viscosity, viscosity and fluidity are inversely proportional, F uh, phi equal to 1 by eta, eta is the coefficient of viscosity and phi is the fluidity and fluidity is proportional to this expression. So, if they are inversely related, we can say the uh, coefficient of viscosity will be directly proportional to the expression where without the minus sign of e to the power the uh, activation energy by R T. So, so, from this expression implies the viscosity should decrease sharply 
this is the uh, uh, decrease in, in uh, uh, the viscosity sh should decrease sharply when you have a increasing temperature this plot is not of uh, uh, what we have is ln eta versus 1 by t this is 1 by t this is ln eta okay so as you see as the temperature is uh, this side is 1 by t higher temperature means you have lower value as at lower values of 1 by t you will have means high temperature will you will have exponentially high values of um, log ln so this this implies that the activation energy uh, of a typical vis uh, 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 vis viscosity is comparable to that of the mean potential energy of the intermolecular interactions this is what we have assumed and this is uh, experimental evidence is there that we can say that activation energy is typical of the comparable to the potential energy required for intermolecular forces existing in the liquid system so you have a viscosity uh, um, uh, profile where viscosity should decrease sharply with increase in temperature now this is okay so far but there are few problems associated with the interpretation of temperature dependence of the viscosity system which we have studied as water what happens we have not changed uh, take looked into the factor that when we increase the temperature then the density of the system changes okay so change in density of the liquid as you are uh, heating have a has a pronounced uh, effect contribution to the temperature variation of viscosity the temperature de uh, dependence of viscosity at constant volume when the pressure is constant is much different from that of the condition when you have constant pressure okay so this is one uh, say shortfall of what we have just now uh, taken as evidence next one is the it is not a um, shortfall but it is a limitation which we have the intermolecular interactions bet between the molecules the with that we have taken is equal to the magnitude of the activation energy this this is uh, actually not yet been uh, calculated or is or solved um, unsolved till date so this expression we do not really have we have only evidences to prove that and again at low temperatures the viscosity of water decreases as the pressure is increased this is a phenomena associated with water because of rupture of hydrogen bond so at only at low temperature what if you look into the viscosity the viscosity with decreases with pressure is increased okay so th this is only for the system where you have um, hydrogen bond so rupture of hydrogen bond is consistent with this behavior so a more uh, appropriate uh, way of looking into the motion of molecular motion in a liquid system will be to deal with solutions so what we are going to look into we will take ionic solutions ions in solutions where solutions uh, uh, containing ion will be where you have uh, uh, say two electrode put into the system and these ions will be dragged acro across the potential gradient if we can look into that we can have a more precise interpretation of the transport properties associated with the liquid system so we will uh, look into that in the next class thank you